Hello, fellow internet degenerates. It's me, Drew Buff, and welcome back to Swooning Over Stands. I ended the last video with like a cliffhanger, which it really wasn't because I said at the beginning of the last video, the first video of the series, who I was gonna romance. So I don't know why I chose to to make it a cliffhanger, but either way, we're gonna romance Grunkle Ford. <laughs> Love of my life, absolute gilf. Don't get me wrong, they're both gilfs. And and if I feel so inclined, I may play this game again to get some different endings with some with the other grunkle. But for now, I want to I want to romance Ford. I'm sorry to all the stand girlies, but I myself love the six finger dork. I can't help it. Okay, he's like my type to a T. Canonical silver fox. I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> Let's just get back into it before I start losing my mind. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna get to know Ford. As much as I would love to check out my car, I wanna get to know this. I wanna get to know this man. <laughs> I don't know if I like the person I'm becoming during this gameplay. <laughs> I'm just like unhinged. Ford, wait. Need a hand with that recipe? I can handle it myself. Oh. <laughs> what a, what a not, like what a, um, what's the word that I want? What a like, buzzkill's not the word. How disappointing of <laughs> a response. Man, are you being so for real right now? Are you sure you couldn't use a hand? I... Ford looks away then, and you follow his averted line of sight to Mabel, who's just mouthed something that you couldn't catch. When she catches you looking her way, Mabel gives you a hundred watt smile, the picture of innocence. Ford rubs the back of his neck. Yes, I suppose I can accept some help. Is he nervous? <laughs> Is he nervous about little old Bob? And with that, assured that Ford is on the task, you spot Mabel rolling away with Waddles into the living room. Before we get started, I suppose I should give you an introduction. Bob, tell me, do you believe in the supernatural? I want to. Yes, no, I want to. I do, wholeheartedly. I believe that there's weird shit going on out there. Yes. Well, you're about to come face to face with the unexplainable yourself. You see, Gravity Falls isn't some quiet, unassuming backwater town. Much more lurks below its surface. Ford pockets the crumpled journal papers and gestures for you to join him as he walks. You do, and follow him through the living room and into the gift shop. Oh my gosh, it's the mystery shack! Cute! For example, you must have heard Mabel mention a pterodactyl. Most would say none exist in the living world today, but I say, not if you know where to look. Ford reaches under the cashier counter and retrieves a packet of vintage looking gum, inspecting it for a moment before slipping it in his pocket. He looks around in thought. Hmm. Hold on to my explanation for a moment. I need to retrieve some more supplies. Ford ushers you out the gift shop entrance so that you find yourself on the outside of the shack, then shuts the door behind you. That man just kicked me out. I'm trying to help him. This man just kicked me out. Okay. <laughs> Turn and try to peer through the window. Fuck. Respect the man's privacy. He's clearly got business in that gift shop. I didn't think this game would give me like actual shit to ponder. I thought this was just gonna be like, haha, I'm gonna click all these answers. <laughs> Girl, what? Hold on, let me think. A few moments later. He's being real sussy. He's being low-key sus, as the kids say. Turn and try and peer through. I don't want to upset him, but I am fucking nosy. <laughs> Ugh. More moments later. I'm gonna respect his privacy. I don't want to upset him. 
<sighs> yeah. You correctly and politely just stand out there until Ford returns. <sighs> Perfect. You maybe scan the sky for a pterodactyl while you wait. Not too long later, the door opens behind you and Ford joins you outside, looking no different than before. He must have stored whatever supplies he went to retrieve in his coat, but the trench coat falls too naturally on his figure for him to be hiding much. You know I'd be looking at that man in that trench coat. You know it. You know I'm looking mad disrespectfully at him. <laughs> Where were we? Ah, yes. Ford pulls a pen and pad of paper from his coat walking as he writes. Just as you're about to head out, he stops and smacks his hand to his face. Oh, shoot, one second. Ford hurries back to the house, realizing he forgot one important component to this adventure. A butterfly net? Before you get a chance to ask, he strides out ahead of you, obviously in no mind to tell you what it's for quite yet. Also, if you hear any background rumblings, I am sorry. My downstairs neighbors are moving out and they're not very quiet. Off we go, I guess. The pair of you walk past the shack and down a well-worn path into the trees surrounding the house, sunlight peeking in between the pines. He double checks whatever he scribbled onto the paper and tucks it back into one of his coat's seemingly infinite pockets. He stops and turns to face you with a definitive nod. Okay, there's a lot of rumblings happening outside my door, but I think the coast is clear. And also, if my neighbors know that I want to fuck a gilf, such is life, I guess. What, now where the fuck were we? We were on, I'm literally on a date with this man. Not really. I'm on a kind of date with him and I was rudely interrupted, so. Back to what you were saying, King. I'm so sorry. My recipe for repellent called for a sprig of lavender, two thin slices of ginseng, a drop of bat blood, a chunk of amber, and 3.5 milliliters of ink. He pauses, staring down at the path in thought. Obviously, I already have all those components on hand. All except for one last ingredient. A single moth's wing. I don't want to kill moth. From Mothman itself. Are we about to have a threesome with Old Man and Mothman? <laughs> What's happening? You can't help it. You gasp. Ford glances at you, and you think you see a hint of a smile before he turns back to the path and continues along, wind ruffling through his hair. <sighs> you see, Mothman is the very creature on that page that Waddle seems to fear. Using a piece of itself should ward it away or at least lead it to believe that Waddles isn't for eating. I would have already completed the repellent years ago if I had managed to collect that wing. Was it too difficult? Oh, I just never got around to it. Besides, Mothman used to come bat at this lamp I had lit out in the backyard. It seemed like such an innocent hobby that I never had the heart to chase it off. But if this brings Mabel and her pig a peace of mind, then the time has come to finish this. He's such a good grunkle. I love him. Man, I'm so soft. <laughs> Sunlight filters in through the trees, causing dappled shadows across Ford's coat as he leads in front of you. I would be like going feral. <laughs> Break the silence. How much further are we walking? How do you know so much about this stuff? Wait for him to speak. I want to know about him. How do you know so much about this stuff? I study anomalies. Anything unusual, strange, and just plain weird. You could study me any day, baby girl. <laughs> you could study me anytime you want. Put me under a microscope for all I care. I began my research in this town because it was, and remains, a hotbed of paranormal activity. I made this exact trip years ago, though at the time I had no idea where I was going. It was just dumb luck that I managed to tail Mothman back to its cave from my backyard. Navigating the forest by moonlight is poetic, but not advisable. I made plenty of other discoveries as well, from fairies to gnomes to amalgams of creatures who were never who were never meant to cross, to 
Oh, wait. Ford reaches into his pocket and pulls out the slightly crumpled pages Maple had pushed into his hands earlier, smoothing them out and shuffling through them. Hello? I'm on a very romantic evening with an old man. I guess it's afternoon, it's not really evening. I'm on a very romantic afternoon walk with an old man. Can you simmer down down there? Please? Thank you. <laughs> Take a look at these. They're more definitive proof than just my word. You accept the pages from him and find that they're scanned pages from some sort of journal, just as you'd heard Mabel say. Fluid cursive tells of Mothman, beer, beard cubs, scamp fires, and more. Four gestures to them and explains. I love a smart man. I don't know what it, especially men who are like too smart for their own good. Something about that. Something about that I quite enjoy. I detailed my discoveries in a series of research journals. The remaining pages, at least. I wonder where Stanley was keeping these. You drew these? Were any of these creatures ever dangerous? You must have gotten up to some pretty crazy stuff back then. Back then, excuse me. You drew these? Yes, of course. Who else? They're so photorealistic. I love your line work. These ink washes look so masterfully executed, give an ambiguous nod of acknowledgement. I have seen better. Ooh, what do I want? How do I compliment this man? These ink washes look so masterfully executed. That sounds fancy. My work now is far better, but I appreciate the compliment. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Despite his understated words, Ford looks surprisingly pleased. Am I killing this or what, y'all? Don't, don't jinx it. Don't blow it. I'm talking to you specifically. Future me, don't fucking blow it. Don't fucking blow this for us. Don't blow it. <laughs> I detailed my discoveries in a series of research journals. The remaining pages, at least. I wondered where Stanley's could be. Okay. Were any of these creatures ever dangerous? You must have gotten up to some pretty crazy stuff back then. I'll go with the, I'll go with the dangerous one, because maybe then he'll tell a story and I could be like, you're so brave. <laughs> oh, extremely. Some were worse. Dangerously annoying. Though Ford seems to find his own comment amusing, he doesn't fail to notice your unease. I do have weapons in case things escalate, so there's no need to worry. You brought weapons? Not many. I have a stun gun, my fists, <laughs> and my sharp wit. He's so cute. I feel safer already. Ooh, ooh, what do I wanna do? Ask him about the creatures you must have. I kinda wanna know what this is, but I'm so intrigued by this. That's one way to put it. Only took six years for me to get in over my head. He takes a silent moment to look away from your gaze, seemingly in bittersweet remembrance. Ooh, you shuffle through the pages, deciding which one to ask about. Okay, so we can say, it says here that Mothman turns into a bunch of moths. You mentioned gnomes. Well, we catch sight of that pterodactyl. So about this leprechaun, there are floating eyeballs here. Gravity Falls is home to giant vampire bats. Or you mentioned a Gremloblin. I kind of want to ask him about Mothman. Cause that's where we're that's where we're going, right? But also, y'all know me and my love of vampires. So many, so many options. What do I choose, y'all? <laughs> Where's my ahaha, ah, you're so sexy? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. I wanna, so the, the intellectual in me wants to ask him about the vampire bats, but I do think if it gives me another option, I'm gonna ask him about Mothman. Oh, giant fruit bats actually, excuse me, sir. They were among the first to teach me not to judge a creature by its reputation. I only realized they were harmless once I'd been bitten by one. This is just like a fan fiction I read. <laughs> oh no, that still sounds pretty bad. It actually healed quite fast. I attribute that to the health kick I was on soon after. 
I want to ask him about Mothman. Yes, that's how we'll get the moth wing. Then why not use mothballs as repellent? Well, it... I've never tried. Could the most conventional method be the unconventional one? Or would Mothman be able to overcome its mothling nature and persist? Hmm... Do I just ask him about everything? There's so many. We could be here all day, just talking about monsters and creatures and things. We'll, we'll ask him about the magnet gun. I thought it would be prudent to leave its magnetic fields alone for a while until I have the time to optimize it. You see, I was trying to widen the area of magnetic influence, but it's been a while since I last worked with the gun. I needed to re-familiarize myself with its inner workings. My guess is I switched a wrong wire or two and instead narrowed the beam. I'd like to see how it works sometime. Really? You know, if you're interested in devices like that, my old research colleague Fiddleford would have more to show you. He is the engineering genius around here. But I want to spend time with you, King. Alright kids, we're going to go through all of these creatures. Let's learn about gnomes. Other places have rats, mice, or insects as house pests. We have gnomes. Picture your typical garden gnome, but more... disturbing. Okay. Pterodactyls. I doubt we'll spot it today, but perhaps we can go bird watching later if you're interested. Ah. <laughs> can y'all tell I'm like so normal about this? <laughs> okay, I asked him about the leprechaun and he groans. You wait for further answer, but that's it. Okay. Um, the floating eyeballs. Sounds disconcerting, doesn't it? I once released them into my house by accident and found eyeballs in the most unsuspecting places for months. My guests chose not to comment on my choice of house decor. Cutie. Um, then we already asked about vampire bats, so we'll talk about the gremloblin. Ah, uh, a rare specimen that I've since steered clear of when accompanied by others. Though, if you want to see one in person, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to walk into that situation again for the sake of education. Okay, I already asked him everything, so we're just gonna walk in silence now. Suddenly, Ford puts an arm out in caution, slowing his pace. <laughs> you narrowly manage not to collide into him and take a quick glance around to see... nothing? Look, there. Where? You see what looks like a bundled up plaid shirt moving along the forest floor. Wait, is that a beaver's tail? It looks like a platypus. Like plaid. Ah, what are you doing all the way out here? That's so stupid and so cute. A platypus? Get real. <laughs> Don't you mean platypus? Ford shakes his head with a grin. I meant what I said. It's a plaid platypus. A platypus. Stupid, but so cute. Ford moves into a crouch, but stays at a respectable distance, following the small creature. You watch him, and after a moment, mimic his actions. Oh my god, we're like Steve Irwin. R.I.P. King, gone but never forgotten. Ford's giving the creature a bright smile, the first of its kind that you've seen since leaving Mabel at the shack. Ah, you're a cute one, aren't you? And in one of my favorite patterns, too. Ford motions for you to move forward a little more to the distance he's maintaining. If I were to rate the oddities that live in this forest on a scale of least to most annoying, these little guys would get immunity. They have done nothing wrong, and I appreciate them for it. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. He's so cute. Makes you want to like punch holes in my wall. <laughs> As the two of you watch in quiet apprehension, the platypus ambles to the underbrush and vanishes from view. What a cute little guy. Me at you, baby girl. 
The two of you continue deeper into the forest. The foliage seems denser now, comma, and you look through the treetops for a glimpse of the sun, which has by now dropped low in the sky. It had already been getting late when you left, but you hadn't thought Mothman would be this far out. Almost as though he'd read your mind, Ford answers for you. Mothman is rather reclusive, and as such lives deeper within the forest than bolder creatures like the gnomes. Are you alright? Huh? That is, are you tired at all? I should have asked sooner, it's just been a long time since I've traveled with anyone new. Stanley, uh, tends to speak his mind without asking. Without my asking. I'm tired, that was a long walk, I'm worried about getting stuck out here at night. I'm fine, really. I'm glad to hear it. Still, we still have some time until sunset. Let's wait here in the meantime. You mentioned traveling with Stan. Is this what you do for fun? Why wait until sunset? Well, cause Mothman comes out at night, girl, use your nog. Is this what you do for fun? I don't think he does it for fun. As somebody, as a fan of the show, I don't think he does it for fun. This is just his job, kind of. Let's ask him, I don't, but I don't want to talk about Stan. I don't need his twin to cock block me. I guess I'll ask him, is this what you do for fun? Saving my niece's pet from possible danger? No, not really. I mean, what about trips like these and your research? They come with a certain thrill, and I do enjoy my research, but one of my most favorite pastimes, Dipper tells me it's actually grown quite popular recently, is playing Dungeons, Dungeons, and more Dungeons. D, D, and D, of course. I believe Dipper's prepared a campaign he thinks will really stump me this time. I am incredibly excited. Cute. Take a drink every time I say cute, you will be dead. <laughs> you will be passed out on the ground. The moment the sun touches the horizon through the gaps in the tree tops, comma, four gestures for the two of you to continue. You hadn't noticed, but you'd been resting within short distance of a small clearing that holds a cylindrical stone marker. Oh, here it is. The stone marker bears intricate swirls carved into its surface. Ford reaches into his coat and produces the packet of gum from earlier, opening it and dumping the pieces out onto his palm. Gum? No thanks. Unsure of why you came all the way out here to unwrap gum at sunset, you decline a stick of gum. Ford puts the remaining gum in his coat breast pocket. It was breast pocket, excuse me. He unwraps the now empty gum packet to reveal that it was hiding a small piece of parchment, folded up to act as lining. He smooths it out against the stone, holding it under the deep orange-red light of the sunset. Oh, he's using it for the, the wrapping. You step closer to look over Fo Ford's shoulder. The parchment holds a detailed drawing of the swirls carved into the stone, documenting every crack on the surface. As you watch, a golden cursive unfolds itself across the page, seemingly fueled by the sunset's warm light. We're doing like fucking magic out here and shit, Jesus. Ford reads the words as they appear. Such a place the Mothman doth rest, but please do not disturb his nest. If kindness be something thou bereft, Ford lifts the parchment a little higher to prevent his shadow from obscuring the rest of the line. Follow thy nature and turn left. Wow. Literally Shakespeare who, bitch. I think we turn left. I think so, Bob. We press onward. Well, I'm so smart, y'all. <laughs> I can read instructions. Left leads you to a dimly lit cave, which Ford says he remembers well, except last time he was here, it was pitch black since he arrived in the middle of the night. Oh, it's like so quiet now too. From its depths, you hear the faint sound of dripping water, echoing off the cave's shadow shrouded walls. You slow as your eyes attempt to adjust to the low light. Ford pauses in front of you, reaching into his coat for something. Hold on, I have a flashlight in here somewhere. This cave has never received so much natural light, you see, and hmm. He rummages further and you see a couple dice, the pad of paper from earlier, and a quill. He has some custom pocket work going on in there too, and you bet one of his coat's inner pockets has a pen protector in it. Nerd, absolute dork. Here we are, at last. Allow me to... Darn, 
out of batteries. Let them swear. Please let them swear. <laughs> Wait, I think I have one. You pull out your phone and turn on its flashlight. The light is small, but it does its job. Huh. You saved our hides out there, Bob. I was about to pull out a matchbook. With your light guiding the way, you and Ford move further into the cave, which yawns wide around you. It isn't until the sliver of natural light from the entrance disappears that Ford speaks again. It's been years since I've been out here, decades even at this point, but I'll always remember the eye bats as one of my first discoveries when I arrived at Gravity Falls. How did you find them in the first place? One got into my house, you see. I was making breakfast one morning, and one managed to find my cereal box. When I poured the cereal into the bowl, it came fluttering out, agitated, like it belonged there. The nerve! The nerve! <laughs> he still sounds so indignant, even years later, that you laugh. I wanted to contain it for further study, but unfortunately it managed to get away. As I thought about it afterwards, its pupil had constricted against the light, unfamiliar of the bright light in the kitchen. So either it's nocturnal or it lives in the deepest, darkest cave in Gravity Falls. I found them easily after that. Did you manage to catch one? Somewhat. I came running through this cave with a butterfly net and my wits. I brought a working flashlight that time. They all hid in dark corners. Once I turned the flashlight off, they flocked to me. I caught 18 of them that day, but it reminded me of the stealth uses of the rapid sound of clicking claws against stone startles you, a shiver running up your spine. <gasps> the dark. You turn off your light. Ford taps your shoulder and gestures for you to keep moving forward. I'd be f geeked, dude. I would be like, hold my hand, old man. <laughs> Eventually, the narrow passage widens into a large room. The darkness shrouds the source of the dripping water from view, but as your eyes adjust, you squint to see a strange winged shadow, a shadow with eyes that glow red in near darkness like rubies. Your breath catches in your throat as the realization comes over you. Ford is apparently fairly close to you in the room. You find when he speaks a few inches from your shoulder. You catch the shadow of his arm swing out wide, swing out in a wide arc like he's introducing you to. Bob, I'd like you to meet the Mothman. Oh my gosh, if I have, I have to find pictures on my phone of when I actually went to the Mothman Museum to meet him in person. Oh my God, <laughs> it's an honor. He whispers, but even in the dark, you see him grinning excitedly at you. Ford looks between you and the Mothman, apparently hoping for a dramatic reaction. Your speechlessness seems to satisfy him. Don't worry, it hasn't noticed us yet. Here's the plan. You make contact with Mothman and I... He pulls out a butterfly net and a large lidded jar. Now where that one came from within his code of mysteries is lost to you. We'll capture the 100 moths that comprise it. Wait, I get to touch Mothman? The Mothman? You're heading in with a butterfly net? Seriously? Isn't this a little dangerous? Can you do it? I'll take the net. Well, obviously I have to be brave for this man. I know what you all are probably thinking. Bob, you're wearing a different outfit. What's going on? So as I was editing this episode, I didn't love where it ended and I had to end it because there was like a lot of weird commotion going on outside and it was ruining my my audio. So I had two options. I could either finish the episode, like finish this story arc on a different day, or I could just upload it as is. I decided I would rather just finish the arc and have like a cohesive episode rather than have it cut off at like a weird story time. So we're going to be finishing this episode on a different day in a different outfit, such as life some days. But let's get back into it. We were capturing Mothman when we last left off. I want to touch Mothman. Yes, it turns into a hundred black witch moths. It's like experiencing a swarm of locusts, surprising when you're not expecting it. Remember, even just a light touch is enough, okay? Touch lightly, I could do that. You steal yourself, awaiting Ford's signal. 
He waves his hand to coax you forward, and then it's up to you to decide how to, well, make contact. <gasps> Run around back to its blind spot. Run straight for it. Approach with stealth. <laughs> the gamer music behind me. What do I do? Y'all, what do I- my- I'm torn between run around to its blind spot or to approach it with stealth. I think- I don't want to run, so I think I'm gonna be- I think we're gonna be stealthy. Approach with stealth. You tiptoe towards the Mothman, remembering Ford's comment on the dark, and trying to channel your inner stealth skills. <laughs> no! <laughs> Of course, that's the moment your phone decides to start blasting Taking Over Midnight by Anne Sandra. You're confused before remembering that Mabel added her number to your contacts and you must have made that her custom ringtone. Fuck! <laughs> Mothman turns at the noise and screeches, but before you can barrel into it, the creature explodes into a hundred moths fluttering around you, getting stuck in your shirt and skittering around your face, surrounding you in a mothy hell. Well, <laughs> your task accomplished, Ford rushes into the, s the large swarm of moths, waving the butterfly net with a few unsuccessful swipes. He tries swatting the more aggressive ones away, but there are too many. Did we blow it, chat? <laughs> Did I blow this? Use the phone's light to attract them towards you and away from Ford. Run up to Ford and start swatting at those monsters with your bare hands. Let's use the light. This feels logical. You grab your phone and quickly switch the light on, running to Ford's side and holding it up high. You even attempt to call them over, despite knowing they don't respond to sound. Before long, they all crowd around the phone. The sight of light flickering and reflecting off so many small wings would be somewhat captivating if you hadn't just been in the midst of them. Ford puts the butterfly net back away and jar in hand, carefully scoops one of the moths up. We saved it. Thank? Shout out. Honestly, I was worried. Well, that could have gone better, but we've succeeded nonetheless. As Ford pockets the jar, you turn off the light. With no light and no threat to focus in on, the cloud disperses. That was amazing. Ford laughs, brushing dust and dirt off his trench coat. You could say that. Our completed repellent is within sight. Let's head back. Ford turns to leave the cave. He looks calm and content. You, on the other hand, are buzzing with energy under an adrenaline rush. Should you go for a high five? And fantasize about him whining and dining me before high-fiving me with all six of his fingers, okay? Th th I feel like this is life or death. <laughs> he's so I think he's self-conscious about his hands, so I don't... I kind of want to, but uh, I don't want to blow this chat. I'm going to be devastated if I blow this. <laughs> Let's go for it. Let's go for it. The art. Oh, how cute. You raise your hand in a universally understood offer of a high five. Ford pauses, then grins, high fiving you, or rather six. Awesome. Didn't blow it. When you and Ford finally reach the cave entrance, you find the forest that you left in the dying light is now awash with a silvery glow. A gap between the leaves overhead provides a view of the night sky, along with a long string of stars. How romantic. A few more steps and the Milky Way comes into view, looking as if a tear across the fabric of the sky. Ford notices you looking. See something? The pterodactyl doesn't usually come out this late, but being a prehistoric creature, its behavior is rather unpredictable. I've never seen the Milky Way in person before. I haven't seen the Milky Way in a while. Hmm. Let's go with the top one. It looks amazing, isn't it? It's remarkable what you can see without light pollution from the city. Here on the outskirts of town, you could see a good portion of the Milky Way every night. He gazes up into the night sky. A whole year has passed, yet it still feels strange to see a sky I recognize. What? Oh, 
traveling, you know. I was in a different part of the world. Mm hmm a different part of the world. You both stare up at the sky in a comfortable silence for a few moments. The quiet of the forest settles in, along with the distant sound of flowing water, and you find yourself surprisingly glad that Ford had accidentally pulled you here. If this is one of the moments you get to experience... Cute! Uh, so cute! <laughs> Out of the corner of your eye, you swear you see Ford looking at you instead of up. But when you tilt your head back down, his attention is elsewhere. <sighs> Eventually, the two of you come to a wordless mutual agreement to continue on, and you're walking again. You'll have to show me the other creatures that live here sometime. You're glad you said so when you look over to find that Ford looks pleasantly surprised to hear it. His chest puffs out with pride. Of course! Maybe we'll get to spot the hide-behind, or tag along with Dipper when he next visits the multi-bear. The what? Ford taps his temple, grinning. You'll have to wait until I show you to find out. <sighs> chat, chat, I think... Do you guys think he has a crush on me? <laughs> I'm holding you to that. We have some time left before we get back, if you're up for another walk. You must make a face because Ford looks back at you and laughs. We're not far, I promise. I just thought I might answer a few of your questions, if you have any. Okay, this is where I'll end it. This feels like a good spot to end. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching this week's episode. I know it was a little weird with the two-day recording and stuff, so... And I know that... There's some audio that's like kind of weird, so I appreciate everybody being patient with me this week. If you like hanging out with me, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I put out videos usually once a week. And if you're looking for more content from me, you can also follow me on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash it's underscore me underscore drubop. We get weird over there, so if you want to get weird, come hang out on Twitch. And for those who want to know what I'm getting up to, stream schedules, when videos are posted, silly goofy memes, you can also follow me on any of my social medias. You can usually find me at it's underscore me underscore droopop or you can go to the description below and find all my links there. Once again, I've linked the game for anyone who wants to play it because it's just so cute. I just, ugh. Yeah. Hopefully next episode we get a we get a little bit more comfortable with Ford. So until next time, have a good week, everybody. Bye. Mwah.